I'm Pete English. I'm the president of our uh, Interlink Property Owners Association. And uh, tonight we have uh, Jeff back there from CPAC, that's the Clarkston Public Access Center, taping it for at least a half hour or so. Um, I'd like to actually start off with uh, Kelly from the, uh, Kelly Hire from the, uh, she's the program supervisor of Parks and Rec yes. for our township. Yes. Hello, everybody. Hey. And thank you again for having us. Um, I'm from Independence Township Parks and Recreation. Um, my name is Kelly Heyer, and in the back is Denise King. And we're here tonight, um, as you may know, as part of uh, home, having a home on Deer Lake, you are entitled to a key and a sticker. And we are here tonight, kind of a pilot program. Uh, the Gills invited us, kind of came up with this concept to make it a little easier. You come to the meeting, it's a one-stop shop, we'll get you your key and sticker. Um, so if some of you tonight didn't have a current registration for your boats or you're, you haven't thought about summer yet, um, come on down and see us at the Parks and Recreation Office. We are open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Wednesdays, we're open, open until 6 during the summer, so April through August, open until 6. Um, Deer Lake Beach, I'm happy to report, is going to be open in full swing this summer. The Clarkson Area Optimist Club has stepped forward and gave a generous donation of $20,000 uh, to contribute to our operating budget this year. Uh, some of you are aware we do have a new Parks and Recreation Director, um, Ken Elwer, who couldn't be here tonight. And Ken is going to review operations this year to see where we can tighten up and uh, perhaps we can continue opening the beach from year to year here and out. So, this year, we are going to be taking a lot of customer feedback, so feel free if you have any um, thing that you've noticed or ideas, please don't hesitate to call us. So again, thanks to the Clarkson Area Optimist Club. Yes. We are very, very fortunate for such support in this community. It's great. Um, staffing, we will be staffing at 25 lifeguards this summer, and we are still accepting applications, so if you know of anybody, feel free to send them down to the township. You can download our employment application right on the township website. Our staff is ALIS certified, so in the lifeguarding industry, you can get certifications through American Red Cross or Jeff Ellison Associates. Associates, We are ALIS certified and proud to report that we have an award-winning staff at the beach for a lot of years now. We continue to um, rate platinum and gold and silver awards each year. Um, which is um, an awesome to have right here in our community. Um, great staff. Uh, the boat launch. So a lot of you have your boats and you've used the launch. In 2004, it was replaced with grant funds. And just because of the way the launch sits on the end of the lake there, it does receive a, quite a bit of stress over the winter with all that ice going into that corner. So every year, springtime, right around this time, we take a look at that launch and have to do a little bit of maintenance. And even though we got this brand new beautiful launch in 04, Mother Nature, um, you know, just did some havoc on that launch the, right, right around right the first year. So if you have any um, thing about the launch feedback, you know, feel free to pass that along to us. But we are aware um, the cement does heave every year and we try to fill in where we can and, and get that um, so it is safe to use. The launch is supposed to be locked, so if you are out and about and you do see that lock and the chain not wrapped around, feel free to stop and lock that. That should, under, under no circumstances, be unlocked. Uh, during the day, when the lifeguards are at the beach, it, they should be monitoring the launch, and it is open when the staff is there. Uh, boat parking, we only, allow so many parking um, spots for boat trailers. You'll see at the east end of the parking lot, once those parking spots are filled, we do not let any more daily boats launch. You, however, if you live on the lake, can come down, launch, and then park your tra boat or trailer and vehicle back at your property. But that's kind of a safety precaution way we kind of monitor the traffic on the lake. Was, lake we only allow so many uh, boats to launch uh, on a daily basis. And last but not least, I just want to be brief, uh, we really pride ourselves on customer service. So uh, the beach is kind of tricky because we're, the lake is right there, but we are only responsible for that beach area. 
you know, when the boats get on the lake, we can take information and relay that to the proper authorities. However, because of our limited resources, we don't have our own speedboat and we aren't trained for that. We can't go after and enforce like the Marine Division does. I, the association will be announcing tonight about um, Marine Division Lake Patrols, however. Uh, this year you will see a presence of the Oakland County Marine Division on the lake thanks to the association. So it's not a, a ton of hours, but it is better than um, last year when the Marine Division did cut their budgets and there was hardly any presence um, the past year. So. So again, I encourage you to, if you have any uh, questions or concerns, ideas, feel free to let us know. And again, we are right at the township. Okay, thank you. We have two actual two presenters. Uh, the second one's actually, and we didn't, we kind of threw Kelly in there, but uh, they also have Ralph Shabilsky. Um, the reason we have Ralph uh, coming up, thanks Ralph because we had a situation, it was an emergency situation that happened on our lake a couple of years ago, and there was uh, people going to two different places and nobody going to the person on the lake. And Ralph uh, is our fire inspector for Independence Township, and he has a little piece he's gonna do on what we do in case of an emergency. Ralph. Thank you. Um, I say, uh, my name is Ralph Shabosko, inspector for Independence Township. Fire service for 34 years with the township almost 25 years now. Ken asked me the other day, a couple months ago, about water rescue. What resources does the township have or the fire department or the Marine Division have for water rescues? Um, I can't speak for Oakland County Sheriff's Department. I know they have a dive team. And a dive team basically is for somebody, a water rescue that is already submerged. They dive down to recover uh, the patient. If it's above water, any treatments that is to be done to the patient is done by the fire department. Um, <clears throat> Independence Township Fire Department has different pieces of equipment on most of their trucks. Um, we have uh, water rescue suits. They used to be called cold water rescue suits. I'm sure you've seen some of them on TV. They're orange suits. Uh, not only are they good for cold water, but warm water rescue. And it's also a flotation device for the rescuer and the patient also. Uh, we train on that so much that it's almost a second nature for us to go through this. Every one of our rescue trucks has two of those rescue suits. Um, we also have a Zodiac boat on our rescue two. I should say the rescue suits are on the medic trucks. On the rescue truck is our Zodiac boat and our outboard motor. It can be inflated and gone in within a minute. Every situation is, is different. It's all situational. It depends who's in house, whether the units are on another call. Uh, you might have all three stations out on a call and there's all three rescues are out, our medic trucks are out, you're only gonna get engineers from the department, from the responding station with a backing station, which would bring you the boat, but the rescue suits aren't there. So it all is situational, uh, just like any other call, whether it's a medical, whether it's a house fire, or a water rescue. Things are situational, but we can go ahead and say if everybody's in house, all the trucks are in house, all guys are in house, and you have an incident on Deer Lake, what kind of response are you gonna have? You'll be getting out of station one, this station is your response for Deer Lake. You'll be getting a medic truck from here, which is two medics. You'll be getting an engineer who normally would pull an engine, but because of a water rescue, would be pulling rescue two, which has other flotation devices, the boat, the motor, and things like that. And you'll be getting a backing medic unit from station two which is a backing station for that area. So you're basically getting four medics and an engineer with the boat, and you're getting an officer, a captain that's on duty, or a lieutenant on duty. Um, if the medic truck's going out, obviously one of the medics is driving, the other one's in the back suiting up. The second medic's coming in, you got the driver, and you have another second medic suiting up in these water rescue suits. So whoever gets on scene, there's gonna be two guys in the water and all at one time, as soon as the other second rescue gets there. Then you're gonna have the engineer coming with the with the rescue, which has the boat and the motor, and we can go from that point. Um, Ken was asking that, if, depending where the incident occurred, if it occurred in front of your house, everybody has to use some common sense here. Where's the best place to tell it? If you call 911, say, I have a water rescue, I had a boat accident on Deer Lake, I live at 0000 similar drive. Mm -hmm. 
is that the best place for our units to respond to? If that's what you're going to tell them, that's what the dispatcher is going to tell us, and that's where these guys are going. But if it's in the middle of the lake or closer to the beach or whatever, that may not be the, the, the best place for these guys to respond to. Um, so it's all situational. If you think that I'm calling from this address, but I can see it's closer to the beach, I think it'd be better access for them to come to the beach. You know, you just use your common sense. I'm telling the dispatcher where's the best access for these guys to get to them. As far as during the summer, boats are in the water. If you have a boat available, which is better than our Zodiac boat, because once you're going to get in the water, if you have a boating accident to stabilize a patient, get them on the backboard, now you have this backboard. We can transport them to the shore on this boat, but would it be easier on a pontoon boat? Sure it would be. Um, so if you have a call and you say, okay, I'm going to, uh, this accident occurred in front of this address, but respond to the beach. We will have a boat there for you. Our guys will respond. You, that pontoon is there. You can take them out in it. They can do their, their job instead of waiting for that Zodiac to get there. It's all situational, depending on where their accident is, what type of accident it is. Um, Marine Division, they'll prop, they're getting a call also. Again, I don't know about their protocol. If they respond to their Marine Division or tell them to respond to the incident, if it's a, any type of water accident or it has to be a confirmed drowning, I don't know what their protocol is, but you'll get the team from the fire department that's gonna do the rescue, do the treatment on the patient. The Oakland County Sheriff doesn't do the treatment, we do. So it all depends, okay? Ralph, uh, one of the things we talked about is getting a boat available for your people to get them to the site. Right. And if you use a Zodiac, it's probably about a 20 minute operation, no. isn't it? Uh, so it's 10 minutes We can have that so? boat filled in a minute. Okay, but that's the second response. Would that be on site? Would, that would be the first responders. If we had a pontoon ready for them, they could get to the, the accident site faster than the second responder, which had the Zodiac boat. Is that correct, or did I not? Our, our, our boat is coming out of this station, so if okay. they're, they're in house, that boat will be responding. It'll be with, there within a couple minutes. What would be your preference? Would its preference be that if we as lake owners and we have lots of pontoons and lots of boats mm -hmm. and if something like this happened we said we'll have a, <clears throat> okay it's in the middle of tell your sandbar or whatever you want to call it yeah right one of the sandbars middle of the lake where all the activity is um we'll have a pontoon ready for you at this address <clears throat> that would probably be the best scenario as long yes that's what i'm saying you have to use your common sense where you're calling from and where the best access to the accident is a diff you know, is different it may be on the other side of the lake but you don't know that address Right. So to say, yeah, I can see it from my house. I'm on the west end of the lake. I can't, I don't know the address on the east end of the lake, but that's the best response. But yet everybody knows where the beach is. So is it really going to make that much of a difference to come from the beach or the east end of the lake? As long as we had a boat waiting for you at the yes. beach. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> and like I say, the, the Zodiac's going to come. You're going to have the stuff needed. We'll commandeer a boat. If, if we come to an address and there's a boat there, if the keys are in it, we're going to come in during the boat, we're going to go use that boat if it's the better boat to use. If you have someone at the home site, we get permission from you to use the boat. But if, if that's the best tool, if you want to call it that, to use rather than the Zodiac, that's what we're going to use. <clears throat> Any other questions? Like I say, every every medic truck has a, the the water rescue suits. Are every, those the suits? Oops, there was a picture just there. Uh, red, they were red suits. Look like a Gumby suit. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Um, again, we bought those for cold water rescue, but cold water, warm water, it doesn't matter. They're they're a flotation device for our, our personnel and for the patient in the water uh, to stabilize that patient, to do our treatment with the patient and everything else. The guys can be in the water and not have to worry about supporting them their own body weight and the patient's body weight, they can do their job, get the person on the backboard, get them on, um, to what would be the best because it's larger, it's flatter. Uh, we can get them off the water with his own, with his own <coughs> which is gonna take a little bit longer and not as stable, but we'll still get the job done. <clears throat> but Ken's right, if, if, you, if there's a boat available to us, as long as you can tell them that that boat will be at this address, this is where I want you to respond, it's the best address to there, this is where I want you to respond, and there'll be a boat there for you. Perfect. Yes. Uh, let's say if there were an event, it was a busy day, and there are folks here that are out in the water in their boat. Mm -hmm. They see an instant there are people in the water. Uh, some of the people are in distress. Uh, what would you recommend the course of action be 
or a person who's on their boat who sees an event like this and is near enough to effectuate some sort of some sort of help, would you? What course would you recommend to them? Uh, uh, everybody's supposed to have a an inflatable, uh, or pardon me, a, a tossable life device. So, do you put a rope on it, or you just throw it? What would what would be the course of action? If, if the person is ambulatory enough to hang on to something like that, throw them anything. They'll grab hold of it. They'll hang on to it. That's great. To actually go in the water and help somebody if the patient is unconscious. So he has a flotation device on himself, but he's face down in the water. You got to get him over. Does he have a neck injury? How are you going to get him over? I advise everybody to take a, a class in first aid, just basic first aid. So you'll know what you should and should not do to a patient in the water. But again, as a good Samaritan, under a good Samaritan law, you're going to do what you can do to help this patient. Um, you're going to get in the water and do something so he's not face down. And that's just common sense again. Um, but that's up to the individual. Some people will not want to take that responsibility, but yet a let a life go. No, I don't think anybody here can do that. But everybody has a certain amount of equipment on their boat. Right. We're supposed to have certain things on the boat. What what of normal boat equipment would you recommend that people would would use uh, to help someone in distress that's already in the If water? they're conscious, they can hang on to some any flotation device, whether it be a life jacket, throw ring, whatever they have, a cooler. If someone can hang on to something, anything that floats is a bit buoyant, they'll hang on to it for a conscious patient. But if somebody, if you got hit by a boat, you're unconscious, that's a whole different ballgame now. You know, you're gonna throw him rings all day long, and obviously he's not gonna hang on to it. So are you gonna get in the water? I don't think anybody here is saying no, they can't. You're gonna help that person, no matter what it is, to do the best you can to keep that person from drowning. That first aid class is about the best, so you'll know what to do and what not to do. But to see somebody face down in the water, I don't think anybody in this room is going to turn around and walk away or wait till rescue gets there. They're, they're going to get in the water and do something for this person. But as far as any kind of flotation device, if they're conscious enough to hang on to it, anything will do. Yeah, and you know, I'm thinking about our lake, thinking about the access. And if we have, usually it's more the center part of the lake, and, and I agree, the access would be from the beach, from how your equipment could get there right away mm -hmm. and get right out. Mm -hmm. how it, Usually in our no wake zone, usually you wouldn't have a boating accident because we have a no wake, but you can have other things happen. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I'm wondering if it behooves all of us to have an address in mind. It seems to me if you needed a rescue at the north end of the lake in the no wake zone, perhaps the very end house address is something we ought to have in our head because that way, it seems to me, that way equipment could come in and have an easy access to the lake. We have other lake properties, but they're up and hilly. I'll say, you know, you're gonna the go boat trail would be hillside. impossible to bring equipment in. To get up hillside, to get parked, come back down a little bit, yeah. easier just go to the beach, you can right. get out and there get, and a lot quicker. Yes. Sure, yeah. that's what I'm saying, that's where you have to use your common right. sense. If, you, if it's right on the shore of hillside, maybe not, I mean, it, well, the only There's other, nothing that's a perfect answer. No, the only other access that I see that makes sense with equipment like yours would be perhaps to come on down similar right there at Phelan as an easy access mm -hmm. on. Or at your north those, end, that beach off, I don't know what road that is, um, you have another flat access. Right, beach that's there. what I was saying. So you have well, that's there, private property. at the west right. side, the beach over Yeah, there. and I'm just thinking maybe we just have those in our head, those addresses. Just And it, whether you have a boat meet them there? At least our guys are going there. It's easy access from the roadway to the water, whether it's at the end of Similar and Phelan, whether it's at the beach, whether it's at North Beach. It's flat out to the water, and there's no hills right. to. Right. Yeah. Well, um, last year I was out swimming, and the most um, the attacked by a swan. I consider that a. Um, in the, I live in the, the slow no way. I was. I will question whether what. I would do in that scenario. My daughters were there. I what number would they call? They know 911, mm -hmm. but they don't know any other numbers. You know what? What would be the appropriate thing for them to do and where to go had I been drowned or nearly drowned? Yeah, if, if they don't know where they're at on the lake, obviously call 911. They they know their address, but I I don't know how quick access. You know, I live up slight. Like that hill, mm -hmm. you know, it, it would be the address at home address. You could get I, I would tell them yes, yes, and okay. then they'll take it from that point. Okay. Instead of not going to the correct and wasting time 
Okay. If it's near your home, give them your address. Anybody's, if it's near your house, 30, 40 feet offshore, Again, it's the common sense. Can these guys get here just as quick there? I mean, could they have gotten a boat out to me? This this boat is in a bag as big as this table. Okay. Okay. Carry it down to the beach, throw it out. Two air bottles that we have on our trucks. Fill it within a minute. The motor's coming down. You carry it. It's only like a 15 horse motor. Throw it on the back and we're gone. So okay. it, it, it's lightweight stuff that can be carried. It's not that's trailer or you need to back down into the water. Okay. Everything is hand carried. Okay. Yep. And the number for them to call? 911. 911. Yep. Okay. No matter what kind of emergency you have, call 911 and let the dispatcher decipher from there what needs to be done. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, Rob, um, Sharon brought up a good point. We talked about our no-wake zone. Obviously, there's not going to be a lot of collisions there because, you know, you don't, you don't drive fast there. Um, <clears throat> um, this may go on uh, CPAC. And when we were talking about it, like Park Lake, in fact, Peggy's from Park Lake, okay. and she really didn't know the protocol. So there's maybe a drowning or someone, you know. <clears throat> Do you have any <coughs> advice for, let's say, the non-motorized lakes, other lakes in, in Oakland County, if they have it? Being this is gonna be on maybe the cable channel, is there anything you'd advise in that area? Just when you're calling it in, I'd say you're calling 911, no matter what the emergency is. And whether it's, whether it's, be, it's a drowning or it's a boating accident, the dispatcher will decipher that as far as a water rescue, and she'll dispatch. She, they have their protocols of who needs to be dispatched and when. Fire department's going no matter what kind of rescue it is. Oakland County Sheriff will be dispatched no matter what it is. And at what point do they dispatch the Marine Division? I don't know. And so I would think they would, any water accident, I would assume they would also be dispatched. Why waste the time? You no, know, it's not needed now, but not gonna two minutes from now, we need them and just waste the time. So, but I don't know their protocol. Um, like I say, the, the best thing is to get some uh, training in uh, first aid, so you'll feel more comfortable on how to handle a water rescue yourselves, um, and then using the common sense as far as where should you tell the dispatcher that the accident is at. Yeah, it's in front of my house, but this isn't good access. I think that's better access they go to the North Beach or the beach off White Lake or look into similar in Phelan or wherever it might be. It's because I like I say hillside and how those lots are. Uh, it's not that we can't get down there, it's just how much time is it gonna take to get there. And then again, what's happening to the patient that's in the water from the time someone's calling us to the time we get there? I'm sure someone's gonna be in the water with this patient doing something to help them. When you talk about the North Beach, are you referring to Deer Lake Farms Beach? Ken, you know which one I'm talking uh, about. I would I, say, yeah. Yeah, I, I would think so. Yeah, north of Phelan. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that would be Elizabeth. Okay, so do you, uh, the dispatchers know how to get to that beach? Dispatchers don't know. Fire department will know. Fire department. Yeah. If they say respond to the North Beach or the beach off of, and I don't know the name of the road that it's, it's off of. off of Deer Park Deer Trail. Park. Deer Park Deer Drive, Park. the beach at the end of Deer, Deer Park, Park Drive. Let them know that. The guys, some guys may not know there's a beach there, but if on their map, they'll see Deer Park Drive at the end. Deer that's Park where I'm Trail. going. Deer Park Trail. Trail? Yeah. Okay, Deer Park Trail. That's where these guys are gonna go. They're going by just what information dispatch gives them, gives them back. So it's, it's important for who's ever giving them dispatch the information to be correct on where to send the guys. Yes, sir. Wouldn't it be wise for us to designate three or four areas on the lake for fire rescue? If you, Do as an association, feel comfortable with that, that sure. Like I say, you have three, one on the west end, one on the north end, one on the south end. The only thing you really don't have quick access to is on the east side off hillside there. Yeah, but the, to do the forward thinking and, and pick the areas now, have you review it and say this is a good thing to Perfect. do? And I, if, if you as an association want to do that, and this is the plan we came up with, if there's an accident at the north end of the lake, we're going to direct you to this beach. If it's at the south end, that beach. If it's the west end, similar to failing. Get that to us, and we will get it to our dispatcher, and we'll tell them that this is what's going to happen if there's an accident at Deer Lake Beach. The association, the people that live on the lake, you know, maybe a handful here, there's how many that aren't here, which won't know what to do, but hopefully they'll watch the program and look on your website. They'll get in tune with what they should do for a water rescue accident to inform the dispatch of where they should send us guys. But we will do that. 
Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a good idea. I mean, everybody's on the same page then. Yeah. No one's, you know, everybody knows where the North Beach is, mm -hmm. the South Beach, uh, West Access, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I, it'll make it easier for us to come. You know, mm -hmm. when you dispatch knows where to send us. And once we come up with it, we'll post it on the website as well. Sure, that'd be okay. great. And then, again, give us a copy of it, and we'll get it to our guys, to our shift captains and everybody, and give it to dispatch. This is what's going to happen. If there's an accident, a water rescue on Deer Lake Beach, these are the sites that we are going to be going to. The people that are calling in will give you these sites. Pretty simple. Yeah. Make it simple. Make it easy. And it's uh, quicker. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mr. English, just a, a comment. Um, Ralph received an award last year. He was Michigan Inspector of the Year. I was going to mention that. Uh, I, I think we're very that. fortunate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. If you do have the time to take a, a class in just first aid, whether it be water rescue, home emergencies, or anything, it's well worth it. Uh, all our classes, CPR classes, first aid classes, even though the fire department puts them on, they're booked through our Parks and Rec department. Give Parks and Rec a call, they'll advise you when's the next class coming up, a research class or a full class. Uh, you might be able, if you want to come as a group from Deer Lake Association, they can do that. If there's only four or five, they might throw you in as another class, but um, it's well worth the time, whether you use it on the lake or in your house or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Thank Thank you. You. Hi, I'm Kelly Heyer from Independence Township Parks and Recreation with great news about Deer Lake Beach. Deer Lake Beach will be open for the 2011 summer. The Clarkson Area Optimist Club has made a very generous donation of $20,000 earmarked for Deer Lake Beach operations. The 2011 beach hours will be as follows. Preseason weekends only, including Memorial Day weekend, which is May 28th through the 30th, and June 4th and 5th, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. For the full season, June 9th through August 14th, from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. For the end of the season, August 15th through September 1st, hours will be noon to 5 p.m. Labor Day weekend, September 2nd through September 5th, will be 11 to 7. Hours may be extended during extreme heat conditions. Temperatures must maintain 68 degrees for the beach to be open. Call 248-625-1444 for updated facility information during inclement weather. Keep this number handy for future reference. Cost for the beach will be $3 per resident or for Clarkson School District homeowners and $6 per non-resident to use the beach. Starting May 2nd, discount beach passes will be available at the Parks and Recreation Office. 10 visit passes will cost $20 for residents or Clarkson School District homeowners or $40 for non-residents. Season passes are $75 for residents and Clarkson School District homeowners and 150 for non-residents. The daily boat launch cost will be $10 per watercraft plus $3 per resident or Clarkson School District homeowners, $6 for non-resident. Boat passes are also available, but only available to Independence Township residents. If you need to print out of these hours and prices, look in the Summer Recreation Guide that will be in your mailboxes soon or go to our website at www.itpr.org and click on Forms and Flyers. Swim lessons will also be back for the summer. Three different sessions will be offered. Lessons are two-week sessions, Monday through Thursday, and registration will be in May. For more information, you can also check back on our website. We are also having a Schools Out Come to the Beach party on the last day of Clarkson Schools. The beach will be open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. that day and will be free for kids. Kids under 12 must be supervised. A grilled lunch will also be available for a nominal fee. No pre-registration is required and it's a great way for kids to come celebrate the beginning of summer. For more information on any of these programs or to learn about more offerings at the Parks and Recreation Office, give us a call at 248 625-8223 or visit us online at www.itpr.org. Our office hours for the summer are Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Wednesdays were open late until 6 p.m. 
for your convenience. We are looking forward to a fun-filled summer and hope that you will come see us at Deer Lake Beach.